Hello, my name is Mukul Kuranchikar. I'm a principal investigator and an innovation manager at Technology Holding, a small business uh, located in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, this particular presentation focuses on a portable, ruggedized, energy-efficient medical sterilizer acronym PRIMS uh, for field use that we are developing on a contract with the U.S. Marine Corps. We as a company are located in Salt Lake City, Utah. We have a total facility of 9,600 square feet to, to demonstrate uh, early prototype development as well as uh, process innovations. Our core competencies are in systems biology, advanced bioprocessing, uh, as well as some of the medical innovations uh, and a lot of, a lot of analytical tools and techniques. Over the years, uh, we have done a significant uh, degree of small business contracting with the Department of Defense, Department of Energy, U.S. Department of Agriculture, National Institutes of Health, and the National Science Foundation. We currently have uh, contracts with all three major branches of the Department of Defense, uh, that is the Air Force, the Navy, as well as the Army. Uh, in addition, Chem Bio Defense, Defense Health Agency, uh, as well as direct contracting activities uh, managed through Office of Secretary of Defense uh, through the Manufacturing Technologies Program. Uh, and as you can see here, uh, we have partnered with a number of prestigious institutes, universities, and government owned entities uh, over several years uh, Harvard, Berkeley, Tufts, MIT. Uh, National Renewable Energy Lab, the National Cancer Institute, uh, to name a few, um, as well as we do significant degree of work uh, with private companies in various realms that you will see uh, on the next slides as our uh, gamut uh, of innovations that we pursue. As you see on this slide, uh, the work at Technology Holding focuses on three primary areas of development, uh, renewables under which uh, fuels and chemicals, uh, particularly uh, producing those to substantially reduce the carbon footprint um, of uh, current manufacturing paradigm, uh, as well as reduce the overall carbon footprint of final users of some of these, these materials. So for example, for bio-based aviation fuel, it will not only reduce the manufacturing footprint um, uh, as far as uh, emissions go, uh, but also reduce the uh, emissions of the Department of Defense, for example, uh, as the DOD uses significant amount of jet fuel. Uh, we have also developments in advanced materials space, particularly synthetic spider silk as a direct replacement for nylon in our service personnel uniforms um, because nylon uh, as, as a polymeric material causes secondary burns in an unfortunate event uh, of a fire. Uh, we are developing uh, also multi-channel hollow carbon fibers as next generation ultra light composites for aviation and uh, other uh, department of the Air Force uh, applications. Uh, in, the, in the area of healthcare, uh, our space is drug delivery, uh, microneedle patches for drug delivery, uh, certain medical countermeasures such as human butyl cholinesterase as a medical countermeasure for nerve agents, particularly the organophosphate types, uh, as well as development of uh, certain protein nanoparticles uh, that block radiation uh, at a cellular level and therefore radiation medical countermeasure uh, in, in partnership with the, uh, the, the Defense Health Agency. Uh, and so the particular project uh, this presentation focuses on uh, is sterilization, for particularly for uh, um, uh, echelon 1 to 1 1.5 type of environments, uh, a, a portable and ruggedized uh, sterilizer that also happens to be very, very energy efficient, does not use water as an input and does not require uh, grid scale electricity, so operates on a battery. Uh, and that's the innovation we intend to focus the rest of this uh, this presentation on uh, describing. As you see on this slide, the need from the U.S. government, and particularly in this case, uh, Marine Corps, uh, was very clear. Uh, the government requires a two-person carry 
uh, whereas a one percent carry would be preferred uh, in terms of the total weight of it. Uh, the sterilizer must be designed around a very specific sized surgical tray, uh, which is 23 by 12 by 7 inches, and not a single dimension should exceed 40 inches at the sterilizer level. Uh, the um, threshold electrical power consumption is 800 watts, but objective of the government is 500 watts. The water consumption threshold is 5 liters. However, they prefer that we don't use any water at all. Uh, the power source, ultimately, it must operate off of 24 volt DC hot swappable battery rather than the 120 volt AC 60 hertz, which in the interim will work as a power source. The cycles, it must be capable of um, having 18 sterilization cycles within 48 hours. Uh, of course, the device uh, needs to be FDA 510K certified. Uh, in order to be used in a field setting. And then there are requirements around human factor engineering and transportation and storage engineering that are specifically in the mil military standards, 810G as well as 1472. Uh, these are some of the um, essentially requirements that the government has uh, uh, that we are working against when developing our specific uh, uh, sterilizer innovation. Of course, Marine Corps' interest here is developing the field sterilizer for role 1-2 uh, environment, which is essentially adding a new capability uh, to the department where it previously did not exist. As you see, those two sterilizers that are shown in the pictures, uh, they are not suitable uh, for a role 1-2 environment because uh, the weight, the, the volume, the logistics associated with those uh, particularly, both of these are 6% carry at a minimum. Uh, traditionally, some of you may know of um, uh, Big Bartha, uh, as uh, was the very first name uh, of this, uh, you know, laundry washing machine looking uh, sterilizer, um, uh, followed by another one, but both of those uh, carry uh, highest possible weight. So the performance improvement is definitely enabling a role one to environment previously uh, that did not uh, have any solution and still does not have any solution. Brick and mortar, yes, these sterilizers exist as the solution. Um, the customer, of course, is Markor, uh, you know, expeditionary uh, medical systems, uh, Defense Health Agency, Medical Logistics Division, uh, Air Force, as well as Naval Medical Logistics Commands, uh, U.S. Army Medical Material Agency. United States Army Medical Research and Development Command. Uh, all of these would be natural homes uh, for um, uh, the innovative sterilizer we will develop at the back end of this program. As you see here, the um, bottom left uh, picture sort of the artist rendering uh, of the sterilizer uh, also is a functional unit on the table inside that tent uh, that you see as the second picture to the right, uh, where our lead scientist Ivan Hatlevik is actively conversing with service members uh, who will actively be using this device, getting their feedback, uh, as well as demonstrating the operation uh, that we have already developed. Um, this activity happened um, uh, at, the, at the base. Um, uh, and uh, we were very pleased to receive a very positive feedback uh, on a number of service personnel as well as uh, Marine Corps leadership uh, who were present uh, at this uh, at this activity. Um, as you see in the table, uh, the various attributes uh, as well as what we have been accomplished, we definitely met the threshold of two percent carry. Uh, and there is an opportunity to make this device a 1% carry as well. Uh, but at the same time, the most important attributes are power consumption. We are way below even the objective requirement. We do not use any water. Uh, the operational energy is made by 24 volt DC battery uh, for a two hour period. Um, and we definitely uh, perform it in cycles under uh, 48 hours. 
we use the standard tray with an NSN code in this table, which is the 23 by 12 inch by seven inch uh, that the government has specified. Uh, in our prototype, we have assembled it inside a, a Pelican uh, IM2975 case, but it could very well be assembled inside a uh, uh, different branded uh, uh, case as well as, as the need may be. Uh, however, we believe it can be recognized in the in the Pelican case. Uh, the different brand of cases, oftentimes favored by certain certain government entities, is ECS, and ECS does have a case that has uh, similar dimensions as well. So we, uh, to that end, uh, you know, to summarize, we met all of the government's um, threshold and most objectives. Up until now, as we are further developing uh, this particular device towards recognition and the regulatory 510K approval as we move, move forward into the future. As you see here, our current uh, technology readiness level is at 5 uh, to the base of 9. The prototype has been developed and tested in laboratory conditions. Uh, all process variables have been optimized. Ruggedization is in progress. Uh, we have done uh, our first pre-sub to the FDA where uh, certain discussions are in progress pursuant to final submission. Uh, we have completed our contract base period performance and we are currently uh, in option period one uh, with the government performing uh, some of the additional ruggedization as well as the tests pursuant to a final FDA uh, submission activity. To summarize, essentially the key features uh, of our highly innovative sternalizer that operates uh, in a role 1-2 environment is anticipated uh, to operate in a role 1-2 uh, environment, essentially are we do not use any water at all. Uh, the uh, sterilizer operates on a 24 volt DC battery. We do not need it hot swapped between the runs. Um, it, uh, it's BB2590, which is a currently uh, commercially off the shelf uh, battery that the Marine Corps uses in almost every single application uh, that they have. Uh, the tray is a quartz item as well, 23 by 12 by 7, which we, we have purchased uh, from the vendor that the government uses too. Uh, we project to perform 18 cycles in 48 hours uh, very handily. Uh, it's currently in a Pelican case uh, that is suitable for recognition. But as I mentioned, uh, it could also very well be in an ECS case uh, equally suitable for recognition. It is a currently two-person portable device, uh, but there is a future opportunity for one-person carry uh, that this could definitely be developed into by optimizing weights of certain key parts, uh, converting those to composite materials, etc. Um, this enables a role 1-2 sterilization capability, which according to our uh, contacts at the U.S. Marine Corps is a significant value addition uh, that never existed in the past. So the, the way sterilization paradigm currently works is um, logistically uh, from a brick and mortar hospital like environment uh, these surgical trays are flown on a helicopter to a role one two environment once the surgery is completed they are flown back for sterilization at a centralized brick and mortar facility this particular sterilizer um, uh, completely eliminates that so to to Put things into perspective, you know, one load uh, of sterilization toolkit is about 40 pounds. Uh, and let's say you have to carry 18 of those on a helicopter, 720 pounds worth of weight uh, to be carried every two days for performing surgeries um, you know, at the maximum specified rate uh, that the federal government has here of 18 cycles per 48 hours. Whereas if you have a capability to do that on site, you for all practical uh, purpose need one or two of these trays that continuously cycle through the sterilizer, uh, performing additional surgery right on the spot, eliminating 600 plus pounds of uh, logistical load every two days, uh, which would be considered a significant value addition that never existed before. 
So from where we are to where do do we go, essentially uh, transition to the fleet, uh, there are two most important steps to that transition. One is a full ruggedization and human factor engineering. And those two military standards are listed on, on the slide, as you see, 810G um, as well as 1472. Uh, on one end and at the other end, it's FDA 510K approval, uh, which requires certain tests to be done in a regulatory specific format to demonstrate um, uh, that the device uh, is uh, will pass uh, some of the 510K requirements. The modality of sterilization uh, is a known modality. Essentially, it is activated uh, hydrogen peroxide radicals at the heart of sterilization here. Uh, there are uh, predicate devices uh, in the civilian world um, uh, where certain similar modalities have been approved. So we feel fairly confident on the 510K approval, uh, as well as our initial conversations with a third party contractor on ruggedization. Uh, uh, particularly, it's happening in a pre ruggedized case, uh, whether it is a, um, a Pelican or it is a ECS case. We feel very confident uh, that it is just a matter of time before we fully recognize the device. So both the steps to transition are very much within the reach. Um, uh, and we are actively pursuing those uh, with uh, uh, as rapid set of innovations as, as we can. Uh, 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 currently being sponsored by the Marine Corps. Our primary transition advocate is forward resuscitative surgical system FRIS FRSS um, uh, AML 645 uh, out of the US Marine Corps. Uh, and we are very grateful for, uh, for their support through the contracting activity uh, till date and continued into the future. Ensuring that we meet the requirements of the defense market is absolutely at the top of the list of priorities, uh, hands down. And so to that end, um, we look forward to learning from others uh, within the broader Department of Defense. Where else uh, can these um, uh, devices be used? Uh, definitely US Marine Corps has a requirement and that is a known fact by now. Uh, but rest of the entities within the DOD, uh, we will pursue as well. Of course, Federal Emergency uh, Management Agency, FEMA, oftentimes power is out, water is contaminated, the hospitals must run. Um, these uh, makeshift uh, healthcare facilities that get set up, um, uh, such sterilizer would definitely be very, very useful in certain cases. Um, Doctors Without Borders, um, uh, as, as an agency, um, United Nations, where peacekeeping forces are uh, are going in, healthcare related challenges, etc. NATO forces, rural clinics, contingency device for hospitals, and you know we are all saddened by what's happening in Ukraine. Um, but a device like this um, uh, could definitely be used. Uh, I mean, there is indiscriminate. Uh, attack by the uh, by the enemy, uh, not recognizing hospitals or apartment complexes or other facilities. Um, uh, one could only imagine uh, the horrors of the logistical network of materials, energy, water, all of it broken. Um, it will be helpful uh, to have um, uh, democracies around the world that think like us, uh, access to uh, capabilities like this sterilizer where it is on the front lines, it is helping solve problems of the doctors in the field, no water, no electricity, but surgeries must happen. Uh, a device like this would definitely be uh, a key component of such a capability. On the side of partnership opportunities, um, uh, we are looking for additional partnership uh, opportunities with uh, prime vendors or private um, uh, funding entities that may have interest in uh, f funding a manufacturing facility for something like this, a uh, an opportunity to partner with sales and marketing organization uh, wherein uh, we get additional ability to sell the innovation beyond the defense. Our contact information is listed on this slide. Uh, you can find us on the internet at techholding.com. We have a LinkedIn 
page, just search for Technology Holding LLC. Uh, my contact information, cell phone number, as well as email address are on this page, uh, as well as email address of our lead scientist, Ivan Hathlevich.